I went on, I went to work, and uh, it's weird because I was trying to do things and I, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't put on a computer or anything. Like, you know, for about a couple hours, people came in and see me working. I gave them the money back and forth. They, and the guy went, went, went across the street to the fire department, fire department. And the guy came over, and the guy talked to me and everything. He goes, I think I gotta give you a ride. A ride? Give me a ride to the hospital. It left him uh, without the ability to speak for quite a long time. He also had significant weakness uh, and numbness on the right side of his body. Fortunately, he was able to make a fairly good recovery in terms of his uh, weakness of the right side. Still had some residual numbness to this day, and his speech uh, has improved somewhat, but still difficult for him to complete sentences, uh, particularly at night. An ultrasound documented that he had a 99% blockage of his left carotid artery. The problem in Paul's case was that this blockage was very high up in his neck, behind the jaw, which virtually makes it impossible for the surgeon to be able to have adequate exposure and to be able to safely uh, clamp the artery. So he was uh, very kindly referred to us for consideration for a carotid artery stent. This particular system is referred to as a proximal protection system. Traditionally, the way that we've treated carotid artery blockages with the stent procedure is that we cross the blockage with a filter. Once that filter is deployed a couple of inches above the blockage, we then treat the underlying blockage with a balloon and a stent. There is a small chance, however, that when you cross the blockage with the filter, a piece of plaque could break off and cause a stroke. The advantage of the proximal protection is that every single step of the procedure is done under protection, including placing the wire across the blockage. This proximal protection system was, in fact, done for the first time in our state uh, with Mr. Lemoy, and uh, fortunately, in his particular case, it worked out very well. One of the other issues in his case was the fact that because that blockage was so very tight and because there was some clot there, that would have been a higher risk for him to have a traditional filter protection device because the device might have broken something off and caused a stroke. So this was really a situation where uh, this particular system was really the ideal choice. It's the first time I went to the doctor, the first time ever, you know, and he did a good, good job with it. He's so happy. He talked to me. I said, "Wow!" And then at nighttime, you know, I started talking a lot better. During the nighttime, I I could never talk because I was so tired and everything. Now I've been talking a lot better at nighttime. So, and I got a little bit in in the arm over here. You know, get a little feel. I'm happy to report he's doing very well. He feels that he has improved sensation in his right arm for the first time in two years. He also notes that his speech has improved significantly, particularly at night. He has a wide open stent on his follow-up ultrasound and I feel that he has an excellent prognosis moving forward.